everyone. Yeah, Elk here, and I'm going to give you a little rundown. I worked with uh, Nicholas, and uh, here, uh, what I was doing wrong as far as the cloning is I should have been cloning the uh, original into the scene. So just in case anybody else runs into this problem, a little heads up, and here's what I did. And maybe it'll help you so you don't have to go through what I went through. All right. First off, you have your original <coughs> enemy, bad guy, whoever they're going to be. Have them tucked away off your scene. I uh, created a secondary plane below the whole scene with the original uh, enemy bad guy. Uh, in this case, it's Budge. That's what I call him. Uh, and in uh, in the scene, I have uh, a trigger set up. And you can use whatever you'd like to use. But right now, I have a trigger sitting right there. Okay, there's my trigger. All right. And in that trigger. The behaviors are on approximately the distance to a C node mobily enters the radius. All right, set the variable pudge dead seven to one, and then save it. All right, all right. That's for the trigger. Now you can use it. You can set it up from the scene modes and have the actual uh, uh, variable load, and it, you're ready to go. So you wouldn't need triggers. But that's just different ways of doing it. All right, so we have that. Then we have the actual pudge timer. Every few seconds, do something. You can change this, and it doesn't uh, matter what seconds you do. The longer, the better, of course. Uh, if a variable has a, has a value to do something, uh, my variable, again, is pudge dead 7. If it's equal to 1, clone a C node, clone pudge 7. Okay, five actions for that clone. All right. One of them is set and change, give Pudge help, 100 help. I found if you don't give him help, for some reason, it uh, you know he isn't going to appear. And of course, save that help. And then I put another one in, uh, Pudge dead 7 equals 0, so that way it won't constantly keep popping him and triggering him. All right, and then of course, save it. And then uh, change the position of Pudge, OK, of the clone. So you're not going to change the position of Pudge. So make sure right here, where it says, change which C node, make sure it says the current C node and not the actual actor or bad guy, okay? And then, of course, the position you want it to uh, move to, all right? And I didn't want it moved animated. I just want them to pop and I will be there, okay? And, uh, oops, and then uh, we got that. Yeah, okay, we got that. Sorry about that. And then, okay, okay. And then, if Pudge has something equals zero, hide, make invisible Pudge timer. Okay, so we wanted to hide the timer. All right, so every time he died, every time he's brought back to life, boom, hides the timer, so we'll, we'll not make another one start popping. All right, um, let's test it and see how well we did. All right, here we go. Go through my little thing there. Triggers triggered. There comes Pudge. We killed him. He's gone. He's back. There you see, it works beautifully now. All right. And the key is that you're not killing the original, and that's what I was doing wrong, as I was killing the original and then asking it to clone it. All right. You don't want to do that. The other thing that you want to make sure is in the actual actor, when it dies two things what I have set up or when it dies action on die make sure to hide make it visible the current seed don't make it uh, don't set it to actual the actual actor but to the current seed and then in the die action I have it set pudge dead 71 so it triggers again and then save it and then hide make make visible pudge timer so he's got to make it when he dies you got to make that timer become visible again otherwise it's not going to clone all right, and then of course on attack, I have it shoot directly to the current scene. Make sure you have it set the current AI or camera, otherwise he won't be attacking properly. All right, I hope uh, this helps other people in the future, and uh, thank you for watching.